going to show you how to draw a Beijing Opera Mask. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and if you really, really like my video, share it with a friend. Now, when I first started, this is my second video for doing a Chinese opera mask. Now, when I first started doing these, I originally thought that the actors wore the mask. But no, the actors do not wear the mask. Most of the masks are made for fans, for people to have in their houses to be reminded of various operas and various characters. Um, characters that depict characters throughout history. Now, since they don't wear the mask, I guess you're wondering, well, what do the actors do? Well, the actors paint their faces. They go through some painstaking painting. Sometimes they're painting themselves, sometimes as a makeup person, but the paint and makeup is applied to their actual face for them to look like this character. And um, it's amazing. Chinese opera traces its roots back three kingdoms. Styles and performing conventions have changed many times in this long history of opera as different forms have come and gone. The craft is based on mimetic gestures which express narrative actions such as horse riding, fighting, traveling by boat, traditional in instruments such as lutes and gongs provide a score. Most visually arresting features of Chinese opera are the bold, colorful masks that are painted on the performer's faces. These masks harken back to ancient traditions of face painting among warriors. As with war paint, the colors and patterns bear symbolic meaning. The spirit and personality of each character is effectively color-coded. The main color in facial makeup symbolizes the disposition of the character. Facial makeup dates back a long time to the Song Dynasty 960 to 1279 and the Wuan Dynasty 1271 to 1368. Simple patterns of painted faces are found in tombs and murals of that age. During the Ming Dynasty 1368 to 1644, improvements were made in the skills of drawing and in preparing the paints, leading to the whole set of colorful facial patterns that we see in today's Beijing opera. The black face symbolizes a rough and bold character or an impartial selflessness personality. Red indicates devotion, courage, bravery, uprightness, and loyalty. Purple stands for uprightness, sophistication, and cool-headedness. The reddish-purple face likewise shows a just and noble character. Yellow signifies fierceness, ambition, and cool-headedness. Blue represents staunchness, fierceness, and astuteness. Now, when you see someone wearing the white mask, white suggests a sinister person. Someone is treacherous. You must always be suspicious of them, and they're very crafty. Commonly seen on the stage is a white face for the powerful villain. It highlights all that is bad in human nature, cunning, craftiness, and treachery. 
I chose the green color mask. The green face tells the audience that the character is very impulsive and violent and depicts surely stubbornness and a total lack of self-restraint. So when you see a green mask in Chinese opera, you beware of that character. He's the kind of guy that you want to look out for and not trust. Last, I want to talk about a few facts. When we talk about Chinese opera, what we are really talking about is the sum of over 360 different types of opera, including but not limited to Peking and Cantonese opera. Some types of Chinese opera include circus techniques such as fire breathing and extreme ac acrobatics as part of their narrative. The makeup and costume of Chinese actors can take literally hours to put on. Preparations for the play far exceeds the length of the play itself. Costumes for Chinese opera are so intricate and beautiful that they are kept over generations. And it is not rare for an actor to wear the costume that his mentor wore before him. In China, it is not rare for men to play female characters in Chinese opera. This is not considered unusual and is readily accepted by spectators as just a quirk of the play.